Are you okay, Dad? great American summer pastime. And it's a lot of fun. But there are a lot of no fun things that can happen out there on the water. Going out in a boat without knowing anything about it is like jumping into deep water before learning to swim. But you say, your friend who owns the boat knows what he's doing. He takes off in his boat every weekend, has for years. You just want to relax. Well, don't get too comfortable. What if he falls overboard? or get sick. You should know the basics of how to run the boat, how to use emergency equipment, what to do in case of trouble. A skipper is usually proud of his boat and will tell you about it at the drop of a nautical term. He wants you to know how it works. He should insist on it. Modern power boats have two basic types of motors. This one is called an outboard. If it doesn't have an engine hanging on the transom, it is an inboard or inboard-outboard, sometimes called a stern drive. These two types have the engine inside the boat in a closed compartment. Electric start boats of this size are operated much like an automobile, but the throttle and the gear shift are combined into this single lever control. Mounted there also are the choke, the key starter, and a fast warm-up lever if it's an outboard. When this handle is straight up, the gears are in neutral. You squeeze a release lock under the grip to move the lever forward or backward. It is simpler than shifting a car because there are only three gear positions, forward, neutral, and reverse. When you push the lever forward, the gear engages and the boat moves forward. Since it is also the throttle, the farther you push it, the faster the boat goes. When you pull it back, the reverse gear engages and the boat starts to move backward. But don't back up too fast. The square stern will push water up over the back of the boat. Most controls have an interlock so that the engine will not start except in neutral, straight up. To start the engine, turn the key switch like you do in your car. If the boat has been sitting a while and the engine is cold, it may be necessary to use the warm-up lever and the choke. The choke is generally a button or a toggle switch located on the control. Operate the choke while turning the key until the engine starts. Then release both the button and the key they will return automatically to their normal positions. You are now ready to drive the boat. The boat has a steering wheel and a seat like a car, but there are no pedals on the floor, no brake, for example. The main thing to remember is that a boat is steered from the back rather than the front. On an outboard or stern drive, the propeller thrusts the back end of the boat around to turn the boat in the direction you want to go. The steering difference between a boat and an auto is not too noticeable except in docking, in getting underway, and at low speeds. If the boat is an inboard or stern drive, locate and operate the engine compartment blower switch before starting the engine. This exhausts any fumes that might have collected and reduces the explosion hazard. Other things to locate before starting out are the personal flotation devices, called PFDs. There must be a wearable PFD for each person aboard a boat 16 feet or longer. In addition, there must be at least one throwable device such as a cushion. It is a good idea to wear a PFD at all times.
In an emergency, there often isn't time to put one on. Locate the fire extinguisher and know how to use it. Make sure there's a throw line, such as a ski tow rope, a first aid kit. These should be on every boat, along with a paddle and an anchor. Now that this group has been properly briefed, let's not forget the two fishermen we saw at the beginning of this film. Here, lay down on the bottom of the boat. What's the matter, Dad? I don't know. I feel like I'm going to faint. What do you want me to do? We better try and get back to shore and see if we can find a doctor's. Wait a minute, we gotta get the anchor up. Here, maybe I can. No, get it. you lay still. I'll get it. Oh, wait, now, I don't stand up when you start the motor. Small powered boats generally have a small motor similar to this one, with a rope start, about like a home lawnmower. Never stand to pull the rope. If the motor has been left in gear, or the expected compression isn't there, you can lose your balance and fall overboard. The gear shift lever is on the housing. Be sure it's in neutral gear, the middle position about straight up before attempting to start the motor. Most of the other controls are on the tiller, the handle used to steer the boat. At the end of the handle, there is a twist grip. Turn this grip until it is in the position marked Start. Then pull on the rope starter cord. If it doesn't start readily, use the choke and continue to pull the rope. When the motor is running, look around to see which direction you want to go and move the tiller in the opposite direction. Then turn the throttle back to shift. Put it in gear by moving the handle forward or backward and gently twist the throttle to start moving. The farther you turn it, the faster the boat goes. But in an emergency like this, get to the nearest shore where you see a cottage, dock, or signs of people that can give you help. When you reach the shore, Stop the motor by turning the twist grip to stop and pushing the button that kills the engine. But what do you do if you're left alone in a driverless boat running wild? Of course, he probably wouldn't have been thrown out if he were sitting in his seat. The first thing to do is don't panic. Get to the driver's position as quickly as possible. Turn the key to shut off the motor. Like a wild automobile, the first objective is to stop it. Survey the situation quickly and keep in mind that the urgent need is to get to the person in the water as quickly as possible. Start the motor, shift to forward, and turn the boat toward the person in the water. Always approach from downwind, that is, with the wind in your face. Approaching from upwind might cause the boat to drift over the victim, even after the motor is stopped. Approach the person overboard slowly and stop the engine by turning the key. If he is not wearing a PFD, he may be exhausted from trying to stay afloat. The first thing to do is to throw him a flotation cushion. Get the device as close to him as possible. Throw him a line, coil it, and heave it. The weight of the coil will help carry it, unwinding as it goes. When he has grasped the rope, pull him slowly toward the boat. Unless the rescuer is exceptionally strong, it may be impossible to get the person inside the boat if he is unable to help. Try to get a PFD on him, but if you can't manage that, loop a rope around under his arms and fasten it to the boat. This will give him a chance to rest. 
All you can do now is signal for assistance. But first, anchor the boat. Lower the anchor over the side, don't toss it, making sure the line is attached to the boat. These are the things to look for to signal for help. A mirror. A mirror can be seen a long way on a sunny day. With a bright cloth, raising and lowering both arms extended from the body. Don't wave. You may only get a friendly wave in reply. If it is night, a flashlight is good for flashing SOS. Three short flashes followed by three longer flashes followed by three short flashes. Flares are also used, but they can be very dangerous. Hold it away from your body and over the downwind side of the boat. Never light it around gasoline. CB radios are often found in boats these days. Turn the volume control to on. Channel 9 is the emergency channel. Turn to this number on the dial and squeeze the mic. Talk into the microphone and say, this is an emergency, come back. Release the mic button and listen for a response. Then repeat. If it is a marine radio, turn to channel 16. These channels are monitored by many individuals and government organizations. But you may not find any of these, and the best thing to use is what comes naturally. Grab the brightest cloth you can find, PFD, sweater, towel, whatever. Move your arms up and down repeatedly. If you see or hear people and think you are not being noticed, sound the boat's horn continuously. All boats of 16 feet or more are required by law to have a whistle. Boaters are great people, and the good ones know and respond immediately to distress signals. Hopefully, you'll never have to use them. Just remember these basics, and happy boating.